In the 1960s, there was a Japanese doctor that was having a discussion with a Japanese engineer. And this doctor was extremely concerned with the lack of physical activity and the health issues that that lack of physical activity was leading to. And this doctor told the engineer that he believed the solution would be for everyone to walk at least 10,000 steps per day. All right, so that story was the inception of the modern day pedometer. So what that engineer did was he was like, okay, that's easy enough. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna create this device that actually tracks people's steps. And we're gonna tell them that we want them to take 10,000 steps per day. So this was called the Manpo Kai, which in Japanese, simply means the 10,000 step meter. So that was the explosion of the modern day 10,000 step movement. Um, so you kind of hear, you know, you hear, you know, where did 10,000 steps come from? Was it through uh, scientific research? And there's been a lot of like reverse engineering to get there, but that's actually not the case. It came from this, this Japanese doctor. So modern wearable pedometers either use GPS accelerometers or pendul pendulums, excuse me, to track how many steps one is taking on a daily basis. There are many different devices today that now track these things using one of those three uh, ways of tracking. So first we have our smartphone, next we have smart watches, then smart rings, as well as fitness bands. So all of those things are tracking how many steps that you're taking on a daily basis. But it's really important to understand that on average, these devices are five to 15% accurate, off in accuracy. So the most important thing, and we'll talk about this same idea across all of these devices, the most important thing isn't actually 100% nailing this thing on accuracy. It's using the same device over and over and over. So you're getting the same type of consistent data. Okay, so in reality, if you're taking 9,000 steps and your watch says that you're taking 10,000 steps, that's not a huge deal because there's no magic in taking those additional 1,000 steps, but there is magic in understanding over time how your movement practices are changing. So my, my advice would just be to use a single device. Don't use an Apple watch on Monday and then um, use a Fitbit on Wednesday and then use your Apple uh, phone on Friday, just use the same device over and over and over so you can make sure that there's consistency in the data. And that doesn't only go for steps, that's gonna go across the board. All right, let's talk about some pros and cons with counting one's steps. So pro number one, it creates awareness around one's daily movement practices. That is an extremely powerful thing for someone to even be paying attention to, let alone tracking. So that's definitely a con in my, or a pro, excuse me, in my opinion. Number two, it's an objective measure of how much someone moves. So it's one thing to say, I move a ton on a daily basis, or I walk a lot on a daily basis. And then you look at uh, one of these devices and you're like, oh my gosh, I only walk 2000 steps per day. Maybe I don't walk as much as I thought I did. So sometimes it's just beneficial to have the truth in front of us or to have an objective measure that's sitting right in front of us. Number three, um, some people can use it as gamification to reach their step goals or their movement goals. And you could take that too far, yes, of course, but I think that does fall in the pro category for an amount of time just to get someone motivated around moving using gamification. Next we have, it, it gets people moving outdoors in the sun, right? So that is also a very, very powerful thing. So if someone's you know, looking at their Apple Watch as they're walking outside uh, next to a river with the sunshine in their eyes, it's like we can look at that and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they care about their steps. But let's see the positives in that as well. They're outside walking, getting sunshine on their eyes next to the river, that's awesome. So that would fall in the pro category as well. All right, now let's move into the cons. Uh, con number one, you're moving and you're only moving for a score. Right? So the only reason that you're doing it is to get a good score or a high step count. And I know, I just said two minutes ago that gamification can be a pro, but only for an amount of time. If someone, if the truest intentions around movement is just to get a really good or a high step count, 
I would say that that's extremely malaligned because then what happens when they stop caring about that score? They might stop moving. So let's be really clear on intentions. So if we're moving only for a score, I would put that in the cons category. Next, we have they're motivated by step count alone. And this, I know this has some carryover to the first con, but if someone is, is motivated only by that step count, when that step count doesn't matter anymore, they likely won't take a bunch of steps any longer. So again, intentions and why we're doing the thing is really important. Next, uh, it's a distraction from the benefits and enjoyment of walking. Okay, I'm gonna get a little woo-woo here, but there's some really good stuff in just going outside and stopping and smelling the roses, right? Like enjoying nature, looking around, uh, appreciating how beautiful the mountains are in front of you, things like that. And if we're only focused on our steps, we're probably going to be here the entire time instead of here, right? So uh, counting steps might be a distraction for someone to be able to just go out and enjoy nature. Next, and this, this kind of connects to one and two, but someone might become a prisoner of their step count, right? So if they didn't get steps in today, or they didn't hit their goal steps, it might ruin their entire day, their entire week, their entire month. Um, there's a difference between paying attention to something and putting all of your eggs into that something. And we don't want to do that with anything, especially our step count and how much, how much we're moving on a daily basis. So let's not become prisoners of the thing that we're tracking. Let's track the thing and control it, okay? And then finally, our habits are data versus action triggered. Right? So again, going back to intentions, that's the common theme here. Uh, if we only do something to get a data output, I would call that malalignment. Right? We need to do things because it's good for us, because it makes us feel good, uh, so on and so forth. So really differentiating between that step count and the outcome of that step count is extremely important. All right, in the next video, we're going to dive into prescribing steps.